Hi, Zach Smith here with Fiorentino Perianchor. When I started working with Perianchor pioneer Gerard Fiorentino in 1995, we initially focused on storm testing paranchors and storm drogues so we could learn how to build safer and easier to use equipment. I had no idea we'd end up designing underwater parachutes to stabilize NASA's spacecraft that lands on the ocean, or develop barrier equipment to stop boats from entering harbors. We even pioneered aerial deployment systems to stop runaway boats, and developed automatic deployment systems for the U.S. Navy. This time, we're testing big parachutes designed by Fiorentino to slow the drift of large offshore equipment. It could be an oil platform, tankers, or in this case, an ocean cleanup system made to rid our oceans of plastic. Today we're conducting uh, several deployment tests on our parachute sea anchor. We'll be working with Mosk transporter and ocean cleanup along with Fiorentino. We've all come up with some various designs to try out today to help allow the parachute to remain underwater for many months at a time, possibly for years. And so we have to think of any, all kinds of contingency plans to help make this equipment perform in light wind conditions as well as high wind conditions. So we've built a chute that's incredibly strong. But our concern is when it's really light and wind, what's going to happen to that parachute? We don't want it sinking too much, we don't want it clo too close to the surface, and we want to make sure the canopy remains open. So today we have about four or five deployment tests planned, and tomorrow we'll uh, conduct a few more. And we'll try out all kinds of floats, weight setups. We have stiffeners that we add to parachute canopy, something we've done since the early 2000s with some of our smaller parachute sea anchors, but we haven't tested it out on our larger uh, 60 foot to 100 foot diameter parachutes. So it's going to be really interesting to see what the results are. And this is, uh, how big is the chute we're testing today? Exactly. The parachute anchor we're testing today is 60 feet, so roughly 20 meters uh, size wise for this particular project. That's what the engineers had determined would be the best size for their particular offshore equipment that we're going to attach this to. Now what equipment are we going to be attaching it to? Well we're attaching it to what's called an MVP which is a device used to help uh, collect plastic and garbage uh, in the Great Pacific garbage patch that we have out here. Many individuals from, from around the world are involved in trying to clean our oceans and so our parachute anchor will be designed to slow in, in the drift of the, the MVP that's out on the ocean and that's all what this testing is, is about. We're doing it close to shore because if there's an issue, we want to have an opportunity to take the equipment back to our SO operation, make modifications if we need to, though I'm feeling pretty confident that we have the right ingredients to make all this work well. You know. And once it's deployed, it's going to be unmanned, right? All of this will be unmanned. It'll be on its own. The equipment will drift many months throughout the year collecting garbage, and then the ocean cleanup will have, I'm sure, uh, contingency plans for other vessels to come out and, and, and collect all this data. This is all the testing process right now, but it's looking really promising for the future. Uh, what's really made this job easy is you're dealing with professionals. So you can see the road is going to inevitably be midship. So what we did on the uh, Dyneema rope here is we flaked it back and forth, okay, on deck. It's brought up and attached to the hardware of the parachute anchor, and we're keeping a huge slot in the middle, so that way when we're deploying equipment, none of us are getting our legs caught up in any, in any of the rope. And as I'm deploying the hardware, there's going to be a deckhand behind me making sure I'm not getting my feet wrapped up in, to, in ropes or falling overboard, things like that. So safety is something we always focus on when we're doing our, our testing. And so the trip line is going to go into the water first. We can take our time doing this. The captain will be moving the ship forward slowly. Once that's nice and elongated, we'll probably have two deck hands, one on each side of the parachute canopy, slowly deploying the canopy into the water. And we do have some three meter distance, something like 12 feet down to the water. So as I get towards the end of the canopy, then I'll let the deck hand know to get out of the way, the one that's closest to me. And that person will go behind me and watch me. The other one will be on the opposite side of the chute, helping me guide everything into the water. I drop that hardware into the water, and we all walk back, forward, and into our safety area as everything starts to now move much, much quicker. Got it. Well, what, 
what happened, you know, anytime you test equipment, you never know when something's going to happen. So this is one of those unexpected surprises where our shroud lines from the canopy got caught up in the roller at the stern of the boat. So we broke at least one line right now, a couple more might be frayed, but we should still be able to go ahead and conduct some more deployment tests and then we'll return the chute back to our shop, repair it, and send it back here. And I know they're leaving in two days, so we need to move on, on this project. We decided to add some extra flotation uh, near the hardware where the actual connection point is going to be for the real bridle that will inevitably attach to the chute. We don't want everything sinking too much and entangling with debris underwater. So we want to achieve the right balance between sinking the hardware of the parachute sea anchor and bridle and actually adding a little bit of buoyancy. So sinking too much is not a good thing and floating on the surface of the ocean is not a good thing. So we want to add kind of kind of strike an even balance between the two. And I think because the weight that we're attaching to this particular cable float is it's it's almost just at the maximum that the float can handle, which I think is perfect for this particular test. Are we happy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's great. I'm uh, I'm more convinced. We're in good shape. Yeah, because like we had really like barely no no speed, point point three, maybe less, maybe a bit more. It's really not accurate, and like you you cannot see the bottom of the of the parachute. It's not like like this or like this. It's really it's wide, so there is no problem of being too narrow. Well, after a couple of days, we finally completed all of our tests. We, we had a lot of trial and error, but we finally did come up with the right combination of floats and weights to help really improve the performance of these parachute sea anchors. And I think it's just really imperative that if you're going to build and design this kind of equipment, you go out in the ocean and you actually test the equipment. Find out what the problems are ahead of time, so that way you can fix the issues.